Today, we're making this bunker out of recycled foam, and that's coming right up. Welcome back, and it is great to have you here. Now, if you're anything like me, then you probably kept all of the polystyrene packing foam from your Christmas stuff. So today, we're going to make a foam bunker out of it. And hey, if this is your first time here, here's what's up. If you want to improve your wargaming, make your tabletop battles more epic, and give your wargaming budget more power, then be sure to smash the subscribe button below and ding the bell. That way you won't miss anything. Okay, so to get started, we're going to make the actual shape of the bunker itself. And since I want this bunker to be able to fit my Grey Knights in it comfortably, and they all have these spiky bits, loyalist spiky bits, mind you, none of that chaos nonsense, sticking up, we need to make the bunker a little bit taller so that it doesn't try to occupy the same space as the spiky bit of his halberd. Because, as I'm sure you know, it's not very easy for two atoms to occupy the exact same space. It, it, it's something about breaking laws of physics or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold him there like this. You don't need a ruler, you can just mark off the top of his staff all the way around. We're going to use a ruler just to make it a little bit easier. We're going to bring our ruler in, and if we make it 75 millimeters tall, he will fit in there quite comfortably. So, put him off to the side, go in here, we will measure up 75 millimeters. We'll get our knife and use it to just mark out 75 mil like so and we'll do another mark over here like so we probably want one down here as well but we need to make sure that we are measuring from the same end so put 75 down there mark it there and do the same over here 70 Bam. Bam. Like so. Now we can just connect these lines together with our ruler. Pull our knife along there, slicing nicely. When you're cutting this really soft packing foam, you need a sharp blade and you want to make sure you're pulling the knife along on an angle like that, not like that, because that will tear it real quick. And you want to make several passes. Yeah, I think that's bottomed out there most likely. There we go. So now we go and we do the exact same thing on the other side. There we go. So as you can see, there was bits where it did tear a little bit. That's not going to be a huge problem because this is going to... We could just make that the bottom of it and it'll be stuck to the base and no one will ever see it. But as you can see, we've now made it shorter and we're now going to use this one as a template to make this one shorter, I suppose. We're going to hold it there and we're going to use this one as a template to just mark out the other one. Now we bring our ruler back in and we use the same technique that we just used to cut the top off the other one. Yeah, that smashes up a little bit, but it's not too bad. So put it up that way so that we have the flap side up. Or maybe, no, we know that side's flat, so we will put it on the bottom. So somehow, despite all of that measurement, We've got a lip here, which is not ideal. But don't worry, I'm going to show you how to fix that. So I definitely didn't do that on purpose, so I could show you how to fix when it doesn't work the way you want it to. But we'll get to that shortly. First of all, we need to get them stuck together so that they're one piece, so that we have the box that's going to form our bunker. So to stick them together, we're going to grab our PVA, and we're just going to put a couple of dots along there. I've been told recently that that is a better way to get it to dry 
weaker. And then we're just going to make it so the flat edges are both on the same side. I'm going to bring it down and line it up roughly. Press it down so it goes in. Flip it up this way. Bam. We're going to grab our pin chicken, which will have a whole bunch of pins in it. And probably want straighter pins than that. There we go. One straight pin. Get the corner pressed together. And then just push a pin in so it goes through. And do another one. Then we need to do the other side. And you want to make sure that where they come in, it is as flush as you can get it. So for the other side, we just want to just manipulate it a little bit so that it's flush. Then you push your pin through. Then you press it together a bit. And just to be on the safe side, we're going to put a pin through on an angle in the middle, just so that it can't shift while it's setting. And we'll do the same on this side, like, probably put it through this way. We chuck that aside to dry for, ooh, it should be dry in an hour or so. But if you want to leave it overnight, feel free to. And we'll be back with the next stage when that's set. Okay, so once it's had a chance to dry for a little bit, it's not quite ready to be unpinned. However, it is stable enough that we can do a bit of work on it. So, remember how I said I'd show you how to fix this issue where they don't line up properly? 400 grit sandpaper. 800 would be better, but 400 grit's what I had on hand. So basically, we're just going to take that and we're going to sand. We're just going to sand it down until it's all the same level. The sandpaper will also be good for getting rid of this nonsense over here, where the knife tore at the polystyrene. Now it does take a bit of time, just because. Well, you're literally turning the polystyrene into dust, but it's better to take longer and get a better result than to do it quickly and stuff it up. Of course, the best way to achieve both of those outcomes, doing it quickly and not stuffing it up, is to not stuff it up in the first place. Now, once you get that flat, you need to go around the rest of the top of it and make sure you get the rest of it nice and flat so that it's uniform across the entire thing. Looking at that, I might have accidentally just found a really cheap way to make snow flock. Hmm. Okay, so once you have both of the joints back so that they're nice and level, you flip it upside down, put it on something you know is flat, and then you can find out where your high points are and take them down. So now these two corners are a bit high, so I'm going to sand them down a bit. And that looks pretty good there now. So now we've got that nice and flat. That will accept a lid quite nicely. And now we're going to make the lid while the glue holding that together finishes dry. So, to make the lid, I have another piece of packing foam here. And we're going to find whatever corner looks the best. Say, this one over here. That probably has the best edge on it. We're going to line it up as best we can. We're going to hold it down so that it's nice and flat. And then we're going to just score a line along that edge. Do the same on this edge that you can't see, just to mark it out. Put that to the side. Now that we know that we want that piece of foam cut out. So to cut it out, we're going to grab our ruler, run it along there as a straight edge. 
and we're just going to cut it the way that we cut the rest of the foam going on a nice shallow angle so that we avoid tearing it as much as possible. There we go. So now we have a chunk of foam that's going to make the roof of our bunker. Like so. So now that we've got that, we just need to clean up these edges. So I'm just going to mark out along there where we want to cut it off there. Of course, the piece of foam board that we were wall packing foam excess that we we're cutting off apparently did not have square corners. So we're just going to do that. This is more of just to get the face shape that will go on here correct. So, looks like it goes that way. So yeah, that's pretty good there. Of course the roof's going to come off, it's never going to be perfect. But now, we want to angle this up so that it looks more wall bunker-like. So for that, I am literally going to put the end of the knife there. I'm going to angle it up at a fairly steep angle. And I'm just going to cut through it with a bit of a soaring motion. Doesn't matter that that's not perfectly smooth because we are going to be putting filler and texturing stuff over the top of this anyway. And we're gonna do the same thing from the other side. Now we've got that bit. Now we need to taper off the other angles here so it looks right. Hopefully that hasn't cut in at the wrong angle anywhere. It did a little bit. But that's okay. That still forms a fairly reasonable lid. What we'll do is we'll hide that by putting some battle damage into the side of the bunker there. And it'll hide it very nicely. So now all we have to do is just take the very top of this pyramid off. There we go, we just cut it all the way around, twist, and it just pulls off. And that bit on the top is just a little hole where, say, a mortar shell hit, is what we'll say. I suppose that's what making terrain is all about. It's like 60% actually making the terrain, 40% hiding your own mistakes. <laughs> so now we've got that there, like... So, we need to just sand it down to make it a bit nicer. There we go. So, that is effectively the actual body of our bunker. Now, it still looks kind of... Yes, you heard me right, it looks kind of... Unless, of course, I decide to censor this. In which case, it looks kind of... But now, we need a way to, because, I mean, we could just sit the lid on top and be like, yeah, it's, it's on there. But, that's what exactly what we're going to do. Because, I want to be able to remove it easily, and I don't feel like wasting magnets. You could put magnets in there, but it's getting a bit thin at the edges here, so I'm not going to. I'm going to put that lid aside, and all those scraps aside. And now the glue should be set enough to where we can remove the pins. You want to make sure that you l remove the pins before it is set too hard, otherwise pulling the pins out could pull the joint apart. I've had it happen to me before, and it was unfortunate. But now, this thing looks a bit tall for a bunker, so now we want to make it look well, less like a straight up tall bunker, which is silly because bunkers are usually underground. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make it underground. So we're gonna bring this piece of packing foam back in. So we're probably gonna make it about 120 mil wide. It'll be somewhere around there. So 
Just eyeball it so it's roughly. Grab your knife and start cutting it out. And this is probably one of the few cuts you can do quickly because it's gonna be pressed up against the bunker. So if you tear it, eh, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, see, bit of tearing, but it's not gonna matter because no one's gonna be able to see that ever. Except for everyone watching this video, who is now seeing me be a total hack. So the next bit you wanna do is bring your bunker in and bring your ruler in and yeah. And bump everything after you line it up. Score a line along there. Get your bunker out of the way. And just start slicing this piece off. So that's going to form the front of the hill that our bunker is built into. Now we want more hill because you can never have enough hill except for when you do. I want it to be a bit of the cut into the hill and then put the bunker in there. So for this bit, we're just going to take it off about there. And we're just going to cut that last bit off. Throw it aside. Now we have two sides of our hill with our bunker in the middle. But now we need the third side, so we need another baton of foam about this same size. So we bring in our board of foam packing, and ooh, you know what? That's close enough. Just gonna line it up at the back there. Put a mark. Put a mark. Throw that off to the side and start cutting this one out. And yeah, we're just gonna break it off. It'll be fine. Throw that bit off to the side. And where there's that little edge there, we'll just shape the hill down so that it has a bit of a curve to it. Oh well, looks like we're just gonna be filling in a decent sized gap with a couple layers of filler, which is not ideal admittedly, but it's what we're gonna have to do. So now we want to make it so that these are a bit curved and hilly looking. So I'm going to start with this front one and we're just going to um, first we'll take this chunk here off and you want to get this angle fairly shallow because you might want miniatures to be able to sit on here. And you want to take that top bit off because you want it to not be consistent. You want it to have a little bit of a curve going over. Now we want to get our next bit of foam, which is this one. And we just want to mark out where the line of the front piece goes roughly. So that, we can cut that same angle into it for the next bit. You don't need to get it super correct, but close enough is, in this case, close enough. Because we'll put filler and we'll smooth it over. And we've still got more shaping for this bit of the hill to go. So put that off to the side. And we're going to do exactly what we did on that, but along this edge. And then once that's done, we're going to blend it so that the angle along here blends into this angle here. Okay, so these come together into a rather sharp angle. So now we're going to make a cut down here. just to smooth off that angle. There we go, and now we have a nice slope around there that our box can go into. Starting to come together quite nicely. we we'll put that off to the side. Now we need to do the same to this piece.
So we now have three sides of our hill effectively. So now we need to put at the back some angling so that it doesn't look weird there. We know the bunk is about there, so I think I'm gonna angle it, yeah, about there. And again, you wanna give it a reasonable radius around that edge as well. So I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing with this one. There we go. That goes in there like that. Okay, so to deal with this at the back and make it look a bit more natural, we're going to get one of our triangular offcuts that is taller than here and longer than here. Put it in there. We are going to make sure that that's lined up the front like it should be. Line it all up. Use our knife just to cut a rough line in there. Push that off to the side. We now have this line that we can cut around. And we now have a piece that fits in there roughly. And we're just going to take a bit more off the top, take a bit off here, and we're just going to round this off a bit so that it fits in there nicely. And that's just going to make it look a bit more real there. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side with this piece of foam. Yep, that should do pretty nicely. So now that we've got all of that shaped up, the next step is we need to mark out these because we need to put a door in the back of the bunker. And I want a lot of the large door because I just had the thought, what, given that the Terminator is about the same height as a Dreadnought, what if we had a Dreadnought in a bunker? Yeah, well, let's do that. So I'm going to grab the knife and I know that one side's about there, one's about there. Pull it out, put that stuff off to the side for a second. We have our two marks. So we're going to grab our ruler and we're going to then make some marks that are 10 millimeters in at the top. We're then going to line the bottom marks up so they go up as straight as possible with those 10 mil marks at the top. Cross like that and do the same over this side. There we go. So we now have our marks in there and we're just going to get our knife and trying to get it as straight as possible we're just going to cut that marked section out. Using a sawing motion on the knife so you don't tear anything. Cutting it out there is a bit of a pain. So we want to pull our knife in a bit because there was way too much out there then. And we want to very carefully at a very shallow angle so that we don't tear the foam any more than we need to. Cut along that line until we cut through to the other side. And once we get a decent way through, it will snap off like so. Then we're just going to hit that with a bit of sandpaper, just to clean it up a bit, which means we now have a door in the back of our bunker. We don't need access to the bottom of anything anymore, so now we need a base that we can stick all of it down to so that we can start filling in the gaps and finishing this thing off. Oh, and there's the uh, lid for it as well. Okay, so now that we've got all of that stuff out of the way, we need our base. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring it in there like so, so that it's roughly, so the base only needs to be a little bit larger, actually it needs to be a fair bit larger because we are going to be beveling it off on quite a shallow angle. Then you just 
take your knife out and we're going to just score around the entire thing coming in like so then we just move our bunker off to the side and we just continue scoring around the piece of MDF trying to get it to go along that line until we cut through Ow! Oh, okay. Um, don't drag knives towards you. You will bleed. Um, I'm just going to go get medical attention real quick, and we'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so I'm back, and after two stitches up at the hospital, yeah, that was fun. Don't stab yourself. It's not particularly pleasant. I have now beveled off the base, and we're good to stick down our bunker and hill. Okay, so now we need to stick it down to the base. So to do that, PVA glue this time, I think, because the filler, while it sets quicker, which I do like, it's very thick and it raises everything up and it's not great for sticking stuff down. When you're trying to fill in gaps, it's fantastic. Not so great for sticking stuff down. So we're going to start by pulling this stuff off to the side, like so. Don't need the lid on it. We're gonna start by sticking our bunker itself down. And yes, we are gonna put fire ports in the front of it after it's all stuck down. And for this bit, I'm even going to put a bit there and push it into there. And because it, this wasn't a perfect 90 degree angle, it needs to be either down there or up there. And I think that it's going to be easier to hide that gap down there than this gap up here. So I've stuck some PVA to the side of it and we're gonna pin it. And possibly a good idea to put some pins anywhere else you want it to be pulling together tightly. So now you just need to leave that to set overnight. You want it to be well and truly set. Uh, give it a half hour to set, pull the pins out, then set it overnight. Because if you let it set completely with the pins still in there, they will be a pain in the butt to pull out. They'll try to pull a bit of glue out with them that will be solid, and you will rip your foam to bits if you do that. So you definitely want to just leave it for half an hour, let it set a little bit, then pull the pins out, then leave it overnight to set. And you can even put the lid on it for that. Okay, so the PVA has set quite nicely, so we just have a couple more things we need to do before we can put filler over it. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to add some de battle damage to the hill that looks like it's a crater from where a shell has impacted. So we'll throw the roof aside for a moment. Spin it around so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got a heat gun here. So I'm going to set it to about 30% power because this thing, well, it puts out 600 degrees, so it will melt stuff quite easily. So I'm just going to turn it on, check to see how warm it is. And basically I'm just going to bring it in. Maybe it needs to be turned up a little bit. So you just... Bring it in close. And having it turned down this low means that you have a lot of control over it. Because it is turned down, it means that when you bring it in, it doesn't melt the foam quickly, which of course is good. And if you do it over one of these gaps, you will need to just make sure that when you put the filler in, that it is smoothed out so that it works properly. And we'll just put a couple of indents over here. Like so. So it's that easy. If you keep your heat gun turned down fairly low, it means that you won't melt it quickly and you'll have a lot of control over the depth and size of the crater. But these craters aren't quite done yet. So, we're going to get some air drying clay to bring in here and just put a little rim around them to where the earth has pulled up from where the shell has hit. So, you can take your air drying clay and get it ready so that you have a bit of it out. 
and I've been told that the trick to getting this to work nicely is to wet down the surface you want it to stick to. So we're just going to do that. Like so. And we're going to get some of our clay. And probably want my hands to be wet. And we're just going to roll it out into a nice, well, squish it out, I should say. Probably do it on the board thing. Just going to squish it out into a little sausage type thing. There we go, that's pretty good. So we're just going to put it up on the rim and then we're going to press it down so that it sticks. And then we're just going to kind of press it and mold it in. So that's one of our craters. So now we just have to do what we've got another five to do. <laughs> so let's do them. Okay, so here where it has a fairly large gap because, well, it never lined up properly and when we heated it, it kind of pulled it away. We're going to use some of our clay because we're putting a ring around it. We've got a thicker bit here that's going to press into that gap as it goes around. And we do the exact same thing except we will fill in the gap a little bit with the clay which will help start filling it in. And then once all the craters are down, of course, we're gonna go over it with filler and make sure that there are no gaps left. But if you have to put the clay over a gap like that, don't worry about it, it's fine, as long as it's not so large that the clay is trying to just exist in air and not actually be attached to everything at every point around the circle. And there you go, we now have craters in the sides of the hill, so it looks like it's been hit with a bit of artillery. But nothing's hit here. Well, not much is hit there. We'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so just two more things that we need to do before we can put filler on it and have it ready for base coating and painting. So, the first thing that we need to do is we need to put some firing slits in here and in here so that people inside the bunker can actually shoot out of it. And to do that, we're going to get our knife, and because we use this knife to cut the base out, we're going to snap the end off it and get a sharp blade. Okay, so at the front, right down where the hill goes into the bunker, is where we're going to put the bottom of the windows, and the top of them is going to go about there. Sorry, firing ports, not windows. So, just a short distance in from the wall, and slice along until a bit before the halfway point. Of course you could measure this and you'll probably get a better result if you do measure it. And then again at the top, along about the same distance. Then we need to cut down. Try to avoid tearing the foam like that. There we go. And then 
just like you would cut out any other bit of what we've cut out, you're just going to go along and make progressively deeper cuts until you have cut the entire firing port out. And then from the ins... Oh, yeah. Then you can just push it out from there and totally break it. <laughs> Whoops. So what we're going to do there is we're going to go along the bottom with our knife. We're just going to cut that off and do the same at the top so that it's nice and even. And that's come unstuck now, so that'll need to be re-glued, but that's okay. And I might even cut this bit out entirely. Actually, yes, here's what you do if you fuck it up this badly and make this mistake. We're going to cut the entire front section out, then we're going to put some foam in, and we're going to reconstruct this front section. And then this bit, or if you cut the entire bit out, right, this bit's about twice the thickness, and it's about twice the height. So we're going to cut it in half. This way we don't cut any new foam out unnecessarily. Cut it in half, get the two flat sides, and we don't want them sticking together, we want them sticking out so that we can see the flat sides. And we're going to stick that in the middle, like so, that'll go there. And then this bit, we'll cut some slivers off that to put into those two bits. So first we need to stick that down. matches up quite nicely and makes a few little nice firing ports. So now we're going to do similar on the other side, except the other side, the sides are only going to have one firing port each. So I'm going, rather than trying to carefully cut it out and stuff it up that way, I'm just going to cut the entire chunk out and then re-put the top in. Because that seems to be a lot easier than trying to carefully cut them out. There we go. So we've now put firing ports in the bunker, like so. And to be honest, it's a lot easier just to take the block out and then put the support back in. And as you can see with the roof on, it looks like a proper bunker and looks fantastic. Okay, so the glue's had a chance to set and I've pulled the pins out. The clay has started setting. However, there is a small problem that we've run into. The floor of the bunker is now too low, and when you put people in it, as you can see, even a Terminator, you can't really see him in there, which is unfortunate. But I have a solution. I have some, I think this is 8.5mm thick, and it's just some packing foam that I had laying around, so it'll do fine. I've cut three pieces of it. So this is going to form the main floor, yeah, if it wants to go in, and I've cut it to fit in there perfectly. So it's just going to press down in there. This small bit is going to go in the front here, and then this bit's going to be a bit of a firing step, so short of inches, like Space Marines and Terminators, I'm, I'm using the term short rather liberally there, I know. But it's just going to go at the front right here, so that when I put Mr. Terminator in there... Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, you can see him in there. And when you put Mr. Dreadnought in there, his gun is more or less pointing through the firing port. So basically, you just glue it down the same way we have been. And you don't need to pin it in place because, well, gravity will hold it in there quite sufficiently. Okay, so we now have steps in there all the way around. Because I forgot to cut some out for the edges there earlier. They'll all stick in and glue down. 
Now the last thing that we need to do before we put filler on it, just so that it has some solidity to it, is we need to make it so that this lid, or roof, needs to match up to the rest of the bunker. And we need to put some battle damage into the bunker itself. So, it already lines up pretty nicely at the front. On the side here, I'm just going to pop that corner out. And I am going to tear it. And like we did with the mountain, because this thing's made out of concrete. Concrete. Um, we're just going to drag our knife along it a bit. Very gently, because this is very soft foam. And it's just going to... I'm going to put a bit more blade out. And it's just going to make it look weathered and damaged. There we go, that makes the roof match up with the rest of the bunker quite a bit nicer. And we also want to put some like bullet holes in the front of it so it looks like it's been shot at a bit. And to do that, we're just going to get our knife and we'll put like one, put a nick here. Make it look like it got hit there. Okay, so that's got some bullet holes on it. And I think I'm also going to take a fairly nice chunk out of the front here, and one back here, and even one down here. And I've got something cool that we're going to do with those three little chunks that we've taken out. Okay, so I've got some copper wire here and some side cutters. I have no idea what gauge this is off the top of my head, but it's pretty good for the, for the scale, and it's going to be some rebar in the top of this thing that is going to look awesome. And the reason I'm using copper is because it's really easy to bend and shape, which of course is good for this sort of thing. So we want to get it as straight as we can, given that it's going to have been hit by a missile of some description. Being a little bit bendy is not, not going to be a huge issue. We're going to make it a little bit longer than the gap, and then we're going to just cut it off. And then we're going to insert it into the roof on one side, push it in further than it needs to go in on that side, and then push it across the other side so that it's held in there quite nicely. And then when we paint this, we'll have a bit of rust running down there, which will add some color to it, make it look a bit more dynamic, and it'll make it look weathered really nicely. There we go, and now we have some rebar in those broken sections, which makes it look a bit more real. So it's starting to come together really nicely. So now we need to add filler to it to, first of all, get rid of this foam, soft foam texture on the bunker itself, as well as to fill these holes in on the hill. So we're going to grab our acrylic gap filler, and hopefully it's going to come out. There we go. And we're just going to put some of it all over the place. And when you're doing this, you're going to put, want to put some along the sides of your bunker because you want to fill that gap in and make it look like the earth presses up hard against the edge of the bunker. Okay, so that's got the hill covered in a nice layer of filler. And it should blend a lot of the lines in to the point where when we put the sand or if you put flock over it, it'll be fine. So now 
is the really tricky bit. We need to put a really, really thin coat of filler over the bunker itself. We need it thick enough so that it hides all of the like polystyrene texture, but thin enough that it doesn't give it any new texture. So, to do this, we're going to water down the filler a bit. So I'm going to use this bit of packing foam here as a bit of a palette. I'm just going to put some filler on it, like so. Then I'm just going to bring some water in from my bucket and just make it so that it's, well, thinner. <laughs> because it is acrylic, it takes water reasonably. Possibly put a bit too much water there, but it should do the trick. And we're just going to cover the entire thing in that starting with the roof because that's the easiest bit to do. And because it's thin, if you get a, like a film of it form between your wire and the uh, roof, you can blow it and it'll blow through quite easily. And you spread it all over like that and that gives you a nice smooth surface to rough up with some sand in a moment. So now we just have to do that for the rest of the bunker. Well hi, so there you go, we've now coated the thing in a nice thin layer of filler all the way around. And I got some filler and put a bit of raise up to the step there, just where the sand would have built up against there a little bit, but the step's still going to be visible a bit which is the idea. So now, just to give it a little bit more detail on the bunker itself, we're going to get some PVA, put it right there where our wet filler was, because that's fine, because that'll help thin it down a bit, and we'll grab a bit of the water, which will be good, because we don't want too much, because we're going to stick a bit of sand to the sides and roof of the bunker, but we don't want too much to stick there. Just a little bit here and there. So we're just going to dab glue on really thinly now, all the way around the bunker. You do need to be quick about applying this glue, because it is such a thin coat we're putting on it, it's going to dry pretty quick. And I'm just going to use some of this sand, but any sand will do. The finer the sand, the better though. And we just get our sand and just sprinkle it on, just to give it a tiny bit of grit. And it comes out like that. It's good if it looks patchy because you want a bit of inconsistency there. So you let that set, BAM! So it's all base coated and black and it's looking mad and the gritty textures come up really, really nicely. So now we need to make the bunker look like concrete. So to do that, we've got some grey paint, and we're just going to give the entire thing a decent coat. So I'm going to paint the entire bunker grey, and then when that is dry, we are going to highlight it with a dry brush. So. We'll get that finished and be right back. BAM! So the bunker is now the base grey that we want it to be. Now we need to lighten it up because it is a little bit too dark right now. Although it probably looks darker because of the black, to be honest. So we're going to get some white. Quite a bit of white actually. Even more than that. Yep. Put it on our palette. Then we're going to get some grey, and I did the white first because I didn't want to put grey in my white. Of course that will be a lot more noticeable. And we're going to make a nice light grey with it. And then we're going to take lots of it off the brush. So not quite a dry brush, but getting in that direction. And we're just going to brush it over the entire thing. And if some bits are heavier than others, that's okay because concrete when it's poured is never consistent in colour. So this will give a fairly nice effect. And you just do that all over, and once you're done, we're going to make the little bits of rebar in there be metal 
without any metallic colors. So this will be interesting. So I'll finish this off and then we'll do that. Bam, so now we've put that light brush over it and it's looking pretty good. That's what the lid looks like. It's I I'm really happy with it so far. So now I want to put some rust effects in these holes. Although, before we do that, we need to put a bit of blast there. So, I'm gonna get a tiny bit of black. I mean, that should be plenty for what we're doing. And we're just going to get it so that it's, again, not quite a dry brush, but definitely not wet. And we're just going to put some black weathering on it to make it look like something's impacted and blasted out. Like so. And ultimately we're going to probably give that effect to all of the impact holes that we've put in it, but for now we're just going to do there. I'll do those later. So now that we've got that done, we're going to get some of this brown, and to be perfectly blunt, this brown is too light for my taste. So we're going to take it, and we're going to mix it in with the black a little bit, just to darken it down. And we're going to take that, and we're going to paint the metal rebar in there with it. Like so. Like so. And then we're going to get some water and we're going to thin this brown down into a bit of a light wash. Or is it a brown dark wash? And we're going to just give it a bit of a run down there. Just so it looks like it's kind of rusted and then run down. Possibly even needs a bit of red in it. Just kind of put it wherever it would be likely to have the rust water pool. Because that's what this is effectively, a rust stain. Oh, and when you run it down the side, you want to make sure that it lines up properly. <laughs> Otherwise it could look a bit silly. So now we have our little rusty bits of rebar with a bit of rust stain running down the side of the building. Make it look like it's been sitting out here for a while. And because there will have been water pooling here, we're going to want to get some clump foliage and just put a bit in there just to make it look like moss and stuff's growing there. So, since we're putting a bit of foliage on, we're going to put some glue down. Do you know what? It can go there. <laughs> since it's already dripped there. I mean, I wouldn't recommend using the base of your model as a palette, but it already dripped there and sand's going to go over that, so it's <laughs> not a big deal. We're just going to grab a bit of that glue and just put a bit here. Turns out I don't really have that many clumps in here. So we're just going to get a bit of this, sprinkle it on. And it should only stick where the glue is. And there's a bit of green growing on our bunker just to add to the realism a bit. And now there is one more thing that we need to do before we can say this thing is finished. And that is to get glue and stick some sand down on it so that, you know, all of this is textured because the bunker itself is now done. We just need to texture the base and the mountain up. So I'm going to get PVA as usual. I'm just going to put it all over the place. And when you're coming in towards the building itself, you want to come up to it and you can go up the wall a tiny bit, but try to avoid going up too far because obviously you, whatever material you're using to texture uh, your model with would not go up too far. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we've got it all covered in glue where we want the glue to go, and I've put a bit of this thin foam underneath just to catch the excess sand. Now, if you're going to put any trees or crystals or anything like that on here, now's when you do it before you add your sand or flop. And there we go. We now have a nice little bunker in a hill and it's even got some craters around it, which I think it looks pretty mad. Okay, so now just to finish it off, we're gonna spray it down with PVA and water our spray bottle and just get the entire thing drenched down if it wants to work. But once you've got the lid done, you're going to want to remove the lid and place it somewhere for the sealer on that to dry because we don't want to accidentally glue it down to the bunker. Alright, so if your spray bottle gets blocked up, check the little filter at the end of it to see if that's what's if that's the bit that's blocked. And then after you're done spraying that down, you want to put the nozzle of your bottle in some water to soak for a bit so that it doesn't block up like mine always do. And then you just need to set this somewhere so that it can dry and any excess fluid can run off and not damage anything. And it's all done. Okay, so there you go. That was a bunker built into a hill and how fantastic does that look? I mean, I'm really happy with the way it came out. It took a couple of hours to make, but the result is well and truly worth it, especially given the size of this piece of terrain. I mean, you buy a piece of terrain that sort of size from any manufacturer, it's going to cost you a bit of money, and then you're still going to have to assemble it and paint it, so you're going to have to invest that time anyway. Making it out of recycled foam makes it really cheap. One thing you do really need to remember when you're working with this low density packing foam is that it tears really, really easily. So sharp knives are an absolute must. And you are also going to want to have some fairly high grit sandpaper on hand if you're going to be painting the foam itself. But if you're putting a texture over it, you don't need that much. As you saw for the bunker itself, we put a bit of sand on it just to give it a bit of texture and grit. So we didn't need to sand it really at all. However, if you were making a metal surface, you would definitely want to be, well, sanding it with somewhere around a 1000 grit sandpaper to make sure that you got it nice and smooth. So, let us know in the comment section below what you thought of this piece of terrain, and if you have any other ideas for the videos you'd like us to make, chuck that in the comment section below as well. And as usual, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so we know that you like it so we can keep making stuff that you like. And as always, if you want to improve your wargaming, make your tabletop battles more epic, and give your wargaming budget more power, then be sure to smash the crosshair and ding the bell. You'll subscribe and I'll be able to share with you more battle reports, terrain tutorials, and strategies to make your wargaming experience more epic. And I'll see you next time.